What a lovely day it is in New York City. Okay, action right off the bat. This is gonna be a good one. We cut to a police station where Walter, the chief, receives a phone call from a mysterious man named Simon. Simon reveals that he was the one behind the explosion, and there will be another one if his demands are not met. Simon says, get John McLean and stick him in Harlem. Hmm, okay. Guys, where the hell is John? Oh, looks like they found him off a bender. Him and the other officers chat about John's failed marriage before he asks them what the lottery numbers were. Four, six, six, six. Ah, better luck next time, John. One officer remarks on how he always plays his badge number, 6991. Meanwhile, John likes to play 69420. Then, John begins to undress while striking eyes with the female officer. Ooh la la. He emerges from the truck in his undies with the sign dangling off of him. All right, John, we're gonna be a few blocks out. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. I will be long dead by then, my guy. John proceeds through the streets, catching several glances along the way. Meanwhile, at a store, two kids try to pawn off some stolen merchandise, but the shop owner, who is also their uncle, Zeus, tells them to get their act together. You boys gotta look out for yourself. No one's got your back. Especially not... White people. That's right. Yeah, I guess historically we've, we've kind of been the baddies. As the kids walk out, they spot John. Uncle, there's a white man out here. I've seen those before. Not like this. Zeus walks up and has a look. Shit. The sign reads, I hate... For, for some reason, I, I'm incapable of uttering this word. Moving on, Zeus walks up and inquires as to why John is acting a fool. Now you've got about 15 seconds before those fine gentlemen over there notice you. And just on cue, they start walking up. John quickly explains the situation. That explosion earlier is going to happen again if I don't do this, because this weird German dude wants to play Simon Says with me. Oh, yeah, I hate when that happens. Now on his side, Zeus tries to ease tensions between John and the kind gentleman. John gives acting crazy a shot, but this merely invites violence. <laughs> Things quickly escalate, but Zeus spots and snags a pistol taped to John's back. He holds off the attackers while John nearly becomes part of the pavement. The pair hop in the taxi and speed off to the police station. Upon arrival, John learns from a psychologist that this Simon guy is really into him. He wants full control over you. Yeah, what else? You wanna dress and f me? Would that really be all so bad? Just think of the lives you could be saving, John. Then, an explosive specialist, Charles, arrives with the bomb of Simon's they found. He explains that it's a dual liquid-based solution. Once mixed, the charge becomes primed. Check this out. Thank you, Charles. Very cool. Suddenly, the phone rings. Hello, it is I, Simon. He exchanges pleasantries with Walter before requesting John come to the phone. Hey, listen, about the dress. What are you talking about? Anyway, please bring your friend on the line. Zeus pulls up and chimes in with a hearty serving of attitude. Well laid plan up your well laid ass. Oh, Simon didn't like that. Though, he calls back soon after. Simon says you and your new friend will go to a payphone and answer my call within 30 minutes. Before things are wrapped up, Walter attempts to bargain with the maniac. What do you want? Money? Not even all the gold in your Ford Knox would satisfy me. I want John. Goodbye. Now more than ever, the police force is convinced they're dealing with a schizophrenic lunatic. In order to please him, they're gonna need Zeus to cooperate. Because it seems, for better or for worse, he's now part of this mess. Zeus, you're gonna have to come with us. No? No, I don't think I will. This is a white man's problem. He runs off, but before he can escape John's sight, he's lured back in by the fact the bomb they found was in Harlem. Alright, I'm in. The pair head to the designated location, but a heavy problem arises. This absolute chonker is currently using the phone. Police requests have no effect, so Zeus uses shout. It's highly effective. The woman scurries off and John answers the call. Simon inquires as to why the line was busy before letting slip that he knows it's cause. There was a fat woman on it. Wait, this means Simon is watching them. John scans the building, but finds no one. Then, Simon informs him that there's a little present for him in the trash can. You know, the kind that goes boom. Unless you can solve my riddle in 30 seconds, you will go boom. What is full of holes, but still holds water? My girlfriend? The pair call back with their answer. What? No, it's a sponge. Having failed the riddle, John and Zeus take cover. Okay, any second now? Perhaps the bomb is having performance anxiety. Relatable. After realizing they just got pranked, they return to the phone to find Simon, who's all laughs at their misfortune. <laughs> Though, things quickly take a turn for the serious when Simon issues an impossible challenge. They need to hit up another payphone at a subway station, but it's on the other side of town. If they don't make it in time, the passengers of said train will reach their final destination. Heh, <laughs> that's a good pun. Please clap. Not looking to be outdone, John accepts the challenge with open arms. John, we don't even have a car. Well, we do now. Zeus exclaims that he used to be a cab driver and knows the best route. However, John begs to differ. He starts going in the completely wrong direction while claiming the fastest way is through the park. All right. They arrive and are stuck in traffic. I told you so. No, man. I said through the park. John proceeds to scoot exactly his way into and through the park. Everyone in his way be damned. Are you aiming for these people? No. Oh. Maybe that mine. Fortunately, no one is harmed, I think. After dodging some trees and momentarily taking flight, 
The pair find themselves back in the congested streets of New York. Ever quick on his feet, John uses the taxi transmitter to phone up the police. He provides them with his access code, then alerts them of two downed officers nearby. Of course, there aren't any, but this allows John to ride the tail of an amber lamps. Upon arrival, him and Zeus split up. John heads for the train while Zeus goes for the payphone. About that train, it's, um, already in transit. With no other option, John hops on for the ride of his life, tempting death in the process. He hangs on for dear life before crashing his way in. Inside, he searches for the bomb while getting acquainted with all the friendly passengers. Hmm, this looks sus. Indeed it does. Meanwhile, Zeus rushes into the station but catches the attention of a cop. He heads for the payphone, which is once again occupied. No worries, Zeus, just politely asks- Get away from the goddamn phone! Okay, that works too. Uh-oh, now he's really got the cop's attention. Zeus is held at gunpoint while back inside the train, John deals with this time-sensitive issue. The liquid begins to mix as the bomb primes itself. At the same time, the payphone starts ringing. Shut up and get him in the air! I don't care if you shoot me, I need to take this call. Zeus does so, and Simon informs him that he failed. John needed to be there too. With just seconds to spare, John tosses away the bomb as Zeus takes cover. The train comes flying off the tracks and into crowds of people. Though in the aftermath, we learn that there were no casualties. John and Zeus reflect on the fact that they were never supposed to make it there in time. That challenge was impossible. The bomb was supposed to go off. Before they can enjoy a moment's rest, the pair are brought into a truck where they meet with Agent Andy and Bill, who hand them a couple pictures of some suspects. We got Matthias Targa with his girl, Katya, and Peter Krieg, the latter of which is known to suffer from headaches. Don't worry, that random plot detail will become relevant later. Then, this mysterious character in the back reveals Peter's true identity. He's Simon Peter Gruber, the brother of Hans Gruber. The guy John Ice in the first movie. Inspector, it's him. Speak of the devil. Hello, gentlemen. Let me guess, is that you, Andy? And Bill? You rascals. Once again, what Simon says, they must do. This time around, he's planted 2,400 pounds of kaboom juice in a random school. Evacuation is not allowed. In order to avoid this tragedy, John and his new best buddy must head to a park, by foot, to solve a riddle. Meanwhile, the entire police force is mobilized for the task of finding the bomb. As literally all the cops in the city depart, we pan over to the roof where we find the man behind the mayhem, Simon. Heh, <laughs> they bought it. We see that he's joined by Targo and a few other associates. They head down donning some professional drip and convince this guy that they're here on official business. Yep, we're just gonna clean all this up for you. Simon's crew proceed into the wreckage with dump trucks while Simon enters a nearby building, the Federal Reserve Bank, conveniently located adjacent to the brand new hole in the ground. Underground, Simon's men are up to no good. Rip that guy. They proceed to bring their vehicles down and start mining their way towards the treasure that awaits them. Back inside, Simon and his goons subdue the guards, then head down an elevator towards the vaults. We see on the security cameras that the golden side is shaking around. Then, the security guard realizes he's got company and begins to load up his shoddy. Though, he inexplicably empties his load prematurely. Relatable. Suddenly, Katya pulls up from behind and gives him a reach around. She gets a little overzealous, so Simon restrains her. I can sense some tension between the two. With all the police gone, nothing stands between Simon and his newfound fortune. All the gold is swiftly collected and deposited into the trucks. Back to the dynamic duo. They've made it to the park and find a briefcase situated on a fountain. Man, don't open that up. John opens it. She. what'd I tell you, man? Simon calls in and informs them that they have a minute to disarm the device. Using a three and five gallon jug, they must precisely measure out four gallons and place it on a scale. If they're even an ounce off, kaboom. Panic sets in as the men realize that simply eyeballing it is not an option. Fortunately, John's big brain kicks in and he figures it out. If you're curious about how he did it, I'm sure someone in the comments will answer it. Despite passing the test, Simon doesn't give up any details about the school. Instead, he once again issues another riddle. The pair is tasked with visiting Yankee Stadium. While leaving the park, John spots some delinquents robbing a store. He stops them, and they shout, All the cops are gone. You could probably rob a bank. Oh, shit. They steal the bikes and make their way to the bank. On the way there, John is nearly run over by one of the gold-filled dump trucks. Shortly after, they arrive. All right, I'm heading in. You stay put. John pulls up and greets the guard. The man assures him that nothing is out of the ordinary and that he's welcome to check it out. John heads in the elevator with about three other Hydra soldiers. Familiar scene, isn't it? He notices that one of them has his buddy's badge number, 6991. Things just got personal. He verbally disarms the goons by joking about how he always plays his badge numbers for the lottery. I got the tickets right here. Our scuffle ensues, but our hero emerges victorious. Then, John spots a mysterious figure coming down. Oh, hey Zeus. They chat about the missing gold and wonder how they got it out of there. I know, dump trucks, like the one that almost ran me over. More determined than ever, they bust their way into a car, and apparently, Zeus is an expert at stealing them. Twitter does not like this movie. Shortly after, they manage to spot the trucks in transit. John calls it in, but nothing can be done. Everyone's preoccupied at the school predicament. Meanwhile, Simon munches on some aspirin while checking in with his men. Unfortunately, they're sleeping in the elevator, permanently. Targo's temper flares up, but Simon eases his worries. 
He calls up a news outlet and tells them about the school situation. We cut to a phone operator that announces that half of New York just called 911. Now with the phone lines congested, John will have no way of contacting backup. Nonetheless, he manages to find where the trucks were headed alone, a construction site. Zeus splits up and makes his way towards Yankee Stadium, while John proceeds into a tunnel which runs across the city. Fortunately, he's got a little tour guide with him. John spots a dump truck and dons a disguise. Hey listen, we had a report of a guy coming through here with uh, eight reindeer. Ooh, got him with the old Santa Claus switcheroo. John inspects their bodies and finds a roll of quarters. Interesting. While making his way down the tunnel, Simon calls in for a checkup. Of course, John picks up instead and teases silly Simon. In retaliation, he blows the dam. Meanwhile, Zeus shows up to the stadium and two henchmen have a beat on him. Inexplicably, they don't take the shot. The order said they both have to be there, so they just let him go. For no reason. Then, Zeus finds a note that reads, Game over, and heads out. Back to John, he continues forth, none the wiser. However, the sounds of rushing water soon become deafening. In an effort to not drown, John backs up but is quickly consumed by water. Fortunately, he grabs a hold of this latch before taking flight. <laughs> Through the sheer power of lazy writing, Zeus spots him while driving. The brothers from different mothers are reunited, but the celebration is short-lived when bolts start flying. John snakes his way through the window while Zeus speeds off. Man, you suck at driving, let me take the wheel. John tells Zeus to hang on before pulling off a pro-gamer move. <laughs> the maneuver nearly cost them their lives, but they emerge relatively unscathed. Can't say the same for the bad guys though. John inspects their bodies and again finds quarters. They probably need them to pay a toll. Very clever, Zeus. Meanwhile, the police have somehow tracked down the school in question. Looks like they received a new shipment today. I wonder what's in it. Charles has a look. Yep, uh, that's not good. One of the officers heads at the auditorium, where the kids are currently being held. He tells them they're going to do an exciting new fire drill. Coincidentally, Zeus's nephews go to this school. Hmm, this ain't no fire drill. That's a cop. They think they're in trouble because of the stolen radio from earlier, so they go hide as the other kids are prepped to take off. At the same time, Charles tries his hand at disarming the device. Back to John and Zeus. They make it to the toll bridge and find the trunks have already boarded on a ship. Completely out of character, Zeus suggests they jump. I can make it. Fortunately, John has a better plan. He uses the winch, which their car conveniently has, and manages to latch it onto the ship. The pair then sneakily make their way down, but they're spotted by a henchman. Before their turn to Swiss cheese, the line runs out and the car is yanked off the bridge. As the pair fall, the cable falls in deadly fashion. He's not walking that off. John grabs the fallen soldier's blicky and gives it to Zeus. It's real simple. You pull this back and pull the trigger. Sit. Yep. The pair split up again. John heads towards the cargo while Zeus proceeds on the deck. Zeus ends up running into Simon and the gang and holds them at gunpoint. Simon is oddly nonchalant about the whole affair. Oh, what may help you with that? Don't take sleep to catch up. No! Anyway, on John's end of things, he ices his henchmen before Big Man Targo tussles with him. Oh, and I should mention that they're down here because they noticed the cargo was filled with scrap metal instead of gold. Sus. The fight continues with Targo quickly gaining the upper hand. He then decides to start monologuing instead of finishing John off. A fatal mistake. John pulls off a comeback and beats Targo down with the chain. Then, he heads up in search of Simon, but finds no one. Back at the school, the kids make a run for it, but Zeus's nephews end up left behind. A cop and teacher run back inside to save them as the countdown approaches zero. At the last moment, Charles clips a wire and liquid spews out of the container. Take syrup. Huh. Back at the boat, the real bomb emerges. Turns out, Simon's plan is to blow up the ship and all the gold along with it. Uh, okay. John is apprehended and tied down with Zeus. Before Simon bids him farewell, John asks for a little favor. You don't happen to have aspirin on you, do you? This hangover is still killing me. Haha, <laughs> today is your lucky day, John. Simon departs and we see that Targo is still alive and ever suspicious of Simon. Babe, he's trying to double cross us and take the gold. Whoa, Katya knew all along and double crossed her mans. Meanwhile, John yanks a wire out of his shoulder. How'd that get there? Then carefully hands it to Zeus. Zeus manages to free John, but drops the wire in the process. John hops down to look for it, but arms the bomb in the process. Just go on without me, man. I could never leave you. John mixes the fluids together and causes a mini explosion to free Zeus. With just seconds to spare, they manage to hop off the boat as it explodes. Soon after, they're picked up and taken care of. John makes a call to his estranged wife, but just as she answers, he leaves her hanging. Then, the camera zooms into the aspirin bottle. Hmm, interesting. We cut to Simon and the boys celebrating their victory. While they toast to their success, Katya strikes a seductive gaze at Simon. He heads off to do the deed with her, but they end up getting interrupted just as things are spicing up. Oh, the name of the convenience store at the border of Canada was on the aspirin bottle. Okay, I, I, I guess that makes sense. Simon and Katya end up on a helicopter of their own and start blasting at Simon and Zeus. The dynamic duo end up worse for wear. But as long as John has his trusted revolver, hope remains. He lines up a shot at a grinning Simon, but instead gets a better idea. Say hello to your brother. <laughs> this line is hilarious to me because I can totally tell it was dubbed in after the fact. And it just sounds super out of place to my ears. Anyway, Simon goes up in flames, and the movie ends. Hey, Jacob, 
I know you're watching this video. Leave a like, man.